You know they say nobody out pizzas the hut. Well, what about this, the ultimate meat lover's pizza? You know what I like about pizza, besides the 14 layers of cheese and all the meat? is the simple, easy crust that this has. I mean, this is so simple and easy to do. You don't have to let it rise. You can get to your pizza quicker. And hey, it's like seven o'clock this morning, so you can have pizza any time of the day. Morning, noon, night, snack. I like to let mine set out even after that. Have why, it cold. Why is it seven o'clock in the morning? Because it's supposed to be 106 today and we're trying to beat the heat because Bertha is putting out some love. Let's get started with this easy, simple crust. And first we're gonna take one cup of warm water. Rapid rise yeast, one package. So dump that in there. What always helps yeast kickstart even more than anything? Sugar. Now this don't call for much, but it does call for a little. So we're gonna give it a little dose. Stir this up and we are gonna proof it. So we'll wait till we see some bubbles. Got some floaties in your water. Yeah, it's just called charcoal. Come out of Bertha, <laughs> did. It's what you call, it'll help you. You know, charcoal is what you give somebody if you're poisoned. I'm not poisoning nobody, but I have been on ranches to where I'd really have a bad stomach ache. And you know, you're out there five, six weeks and you ain't got no doctor to go to. So you just take a cheese grater and some charcoal that had burnt down and just make it into a really fine powder. A lot of times I'd mix it with honey because charcoal just tastes bad, but it'll help settle your stomach really well. Two and a half to three cups of flour, not packed in the cup, just lightly filled. That's two. We're gonna start with two and a half. We'll probably have to have some more, but we're gonna go ahead, and I like my pizza crust to have a little garlic powder in it, so we're gonna give it a little of that. Some onion powder. Give it some more love, some kosher salt. And I really like to use kosher salt. I just think it blends in better. Italian seasoning. But I also like for my pizza to have a little black pepper, coarse ground in there. Go ahead and mix this all up with your hand. Get it incorporated well. Our yeast is proofed. It is bubbling up. It is. So the next thing you're going to do is just make you a little well there in the bottom. Pour right in there. Set this over here. Maybe culinary will come by here in a minute. Yep. There's culinary. He says, hey, we need some water in that. So olive oil. A lot of times when you make any kind of dough, you're using oil. But when you're going to make pizza dough, use olive oil. And we're going to talk about two and a half to three tablespoons right along in there. I would say that was pretty close it was. You would think I would know where this stuff was from one week to the next, but I don't, and the wooden spoon must be at the house, so we'll use that one today. Just fold this around till we can go to making us a shaggy looking dough. And like I say, we'll probably have to add some more flour, but you always want to start out with the least amount first. Give it a pretty good sprinkling of flour. We're just going to need it about four or five minutes here, and we'll be ready to go. Go ahead and get your husband training rolling pin out. Give it a little flour. Mage, how are you? And then let's just go to mashing to where we can get it down here to a pretty level place. We're going to have to do right smarter rolling to get this to about a 16 inch Dutch oven size. When you roll so long, let's just turn her over and go the other way. Try to keep it round if you can. That's pretty hard for me at times. I'm pretty much more into trapezoids, rectangles, stuff like that. But you can uh, roll this crust out as thin as you want it. Now, if you're doing this at home, preheat that oven to about 425 degrees, okay? So, we put this right along in here. You, you can see that what I would call, we are pretty close to this. This is the lid off the 16. So, the bottom side of that is going to be the same because them 16-inch ovens don't taper down. So, break out the pizza dough cutting knife. You remember doing this when you was in grade school. You'd put something on a piece of construction paper and draw around there or cut it out with the scissors. Brings back childhood memories of many kind. Now me, I got to stay in first grade longer than I wanted to, seemed like most of the time, but hey, I enjoyed every day of school, especially when it's time to get out. There be the 16 inch Dutch oven. How are you gonna get it in there? Hope and pray. I like to use cornmeal in the bottom of it 
bring this dough back to you. We're starting on this side right over here. Oh, that's nice. Unfold the bed sheet. Good job. Then unfold the bed sheet again. And then. Pretty. And then this is where you can tell yourself, pizza ain't hot, ain't got nothing on me cause I can make pizza. Y'all want to see me throw this up in the air, didn't you? Ain't gonna happen. Take you a fork and just prick the bottom of that dough. Let me get the lid back on this. And remember me telling you about it is the ultimate meat lover's pizza. Let's get the meat ready to go. Beef ain't it big? Well, you see me browning up this thinly cut piece, what they call Milanese cut of steak. And if they have that at our store, they don't have it nearly anywhere, folks. But if you don't have that, you can get you a piece of sirloin, sirloin cap, and just make sure you can slice it as thin as possible because this is the ultimate meat lover's pizza. You gotta have some steak on there, but we just don't want great big pieces. We want this to be able to cook just a little here and then time it's on that pizza, cook just a little more. You see me season it with our good original seasoning and a little Worcestershire on there just to bring out a little more added flavor. Just brown them up a little, set them back over there. I'll meet y'all over there. We're going to get to assemble time. Half a pound, 80-20 ground beef. Browned it up there, seasoned it just a tad. We did with our original five slices of bacon. Cook about three-fourths done. Then we went ahead and we cut that meat pretty thin strips after we got that steak browned up the way we wanted it. Got us some pepperonis laying out here because it is Shan's favorite. Then step on over here into the, what you call the best part of this nearly. We have mozzarella cheese. We have pepper jack cheese. We have cheddar cheese. Let's hear it from Wisconsin. Go ahead and give it up and have cheese. Then we have red, green, and yellow bell pepper, about a half a cup of each. Half a cup of white onion diced. And what that magical fruit jalapenos. We have took us a, some softened cream cheese and whipped it up pretty good. You can buy that in the whipped container. Cream cheese, is he making dessert pizza? No, we're gonna put a creamy layer of cream cheese right there on the bottom and then some tomato sauce. Also folks, be sure and try out our chutney. It makes a great base for this pizza as well. So here we go. Now I will tell you, this Dutch oven weighed 45 pounds. Now it weighs 145. This is the ultimate pizza. Now, if you folks are new to Dutch oven cooking, I would recommend two things that you cook first. One is a pizza, the other needs cornbread. Because on pizza, you can see the top. We're trying to get all that cheese and everything to melt down there and get a little good crust in there on it. And the bottom, I'm gonna give you this secret. You can actually cheat just a little because you can take a fork and lift the edge up and see how much you're browning. So really it's pretty easy to cook in a Dutch oven, it is. And the kids love it. Get them out there, get them around the fire and let's cook some pizza. Now cold placement, all oh, pretty, pretty, pretty heavy on top it was, I'm telling you, because I want that stuff to get really hot and get that good crispy on that pepperoni because that's the way Shan likes it. The bottom, oh, I'd say a medium heat all the way around the outside edge of that Dutch oven. Not much wind today, so we won't have to rotate very often, but we'll keep an eye on it because we want things to get really cheesy and melted on top and a crispy crust on the bottom. Sometimes even Cowboy Kent Rollin amazes himself with the things that he creates. The ultimate meat lover's pizza. And folks, I just want to show you this crust on the bottom. 
I want y'all to look at that. That's what I'm Good talking job. about. I like that crispiness. You can see that cornmeal in there. Don't forget that trick because that gives things where you can really slide it around. A little sprinkling of some Parmesan. I have pulled me off two pepperonis. These two over here, I mean, they got hot. So we're what gonna. They've been doing. They've been hunting bears, rabbits, possums, anything they can get their hands on. There's a little Magie's. Duke. There's you a piece right there, Duke. So I'm nearly too tired to eat it. Say to Lou, you look a little nasty, you do. Now it is my turn to reap the benefits in what we've cooked, but I want you to look across there. That cream cheese is right down there in the bottom, sort of just, oh, just jumped out there in that mozzarella. That beautiful jalapeno, oh my gosh, and some steak in the first bite. When you can make pizza like that, and you can do it really good, you gotta be cool. You gotta do the cool walk. I'm like real cool, because I can make pizza. I can make a lot of pizza. And then shuffle right on back up here. Get this pizza in your hand and get another bite. Oh my gosh. Well, folks, the good Lord has blessed us again this morning. I mean, we got out here, it's 82 degrees, and clouds sort of stayed, and then right there at the end, he showed the glory to shine up on the pizza, that sunshine he did. Thank you, Lord, so much. I appreciate it, I do. But hey, we just appreciate y'all too for letting us come into your living rooms, wherever you might be that you watch our videos. Be sure and give it a like, and be sure and share the video with the friends and neighbors, because folks, everybody needs to be a better neighbor, and when you can share pizza everywhere around the world, hey, it's a great thing it is. But as always, with great privilege and with honor, I pay tribute to all the service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying above camp. Me and Shan shall never forget you and we thank you one and all we do. Rest of y'all, come on up in here. Now, come on up in here close. I mean, get close. This is a big pizza, the ultimate meat lover's pizza. God bless you one and all and you ain't gotta go to Pizza Hut no more. Well, we have got our need. Hey, just... Can you give me a second after you clap? No, just, I have to have a double not helpful. Huh.